Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to day two of Vlogmas. Thank you so much for your kind words on my Vlogmas day one video. I'll have that linked down below if you missed it. But this weekend, I am just going to take you along with me. I really find cooking very therapeutic. And so when I need some uh, peace and solace, I love to cook in the kitchen for my family. And I'm also going to do some organization and share some Christmas gift ideas with you as well. So let's get started. Well, Saturday was basically a wash for me. So we are starting out on Sunday morning with some breakfast. I fried up some bacon and I'm using the same pan to fry a couple of eggs. I'm just making breakfast for Adam this morning. You guys know that he loves homemade breakfast on the weekends. I'm also going to toast up a sprouted wheat bagel for him. And then I had a bunch of fruit in the refrigerator that I wanted to get used up. So I'm going to use my juicer. I don't get this out very often, but it makes the best fresh fruit juice. So I added some some apples, some oranges, some grapes, some extra pineapple, and a carrot just for a little bit of sweetness and squeezed all of that juice. I like to, after it's done, push it through a sieve. Sometimes I do that and sometimes I don't. It just depends on how much pulp is in the juice. And then after that, I go ahead and pour it into a mason jar so I can shake it up and combine it before I serve it. I'm going to spill it all over the counter also because as you know, I am a klutz. <laughs> I am a klutz. But this it turned out really good. So I've got my fried eggs there with my bacon. I had some jalapeno cream cheese in the refrigerator that we were needing to get started using. So I just spread that on the bagels and that was this morning's delicious breakfast. You guys know I don't really eat breakfast on the weekends all that often, but I enjoy cooking it for my family. This week I was in New Orleans for work and I was able to pick up some K-cups from Cafe Du Monde and also some beignet mix. So I'm looking forward to making that. But I thought this morning I would make us some of the coffee from Cafe Du Monde. So I'm just brewing that up in the coffee maker. I was really excited to be able to find K-Cups in that you know, particular brand. It's just so convenient. And honestly, it's something that both Adam and I enjoy. So I just brewed this into a cup and then I'm going to put in some steamed milk. I used my Nespresso frother to make that. And this was a delicious accompaniment to breakfast. All right, guys, I wanted to pop in here really quickly and let you know that this week's weekend prep video is sponsored by Rebate. You guys know that I love all kinds of cashback and rebate apps and rebate Rebate is a site that allows you to get items from your favorite websites and Amazon, both for free and at a huge discount. So I have some items here that I've ordered and I'm gonna share with you those and how cheap I got them for. I wanted to share this because I think it's a great idea for Christmas presents and we're getting into that season. If you're anything like me, you're a huge procrastinator, so why not <laughs> get started now? So if you're not familiar with Rebate, it is super easy to use. All you have to do is go onto their site, create an account, and and then you can browse their site on what rebates are available. Once you decide what you wanna purchase, you click on the link, you purchase it through the website. Everything I purchased that I'm gonna share with you guys is from Amazon. You go back to rebate, you copy in your order number, and then they will send you a check. Right now, I have $87.73 that is coming back to me sometime <laughs> within the next few weeks. So it is definitely legit, and I think this is a great way to not only get some money back on Christmas presents that you would already be buying, but I actually found some items that I probably wouldn't have found otherwise. So the first thing that I picked up is this waterproof shower Bluetooth speaker. I actually got this for Adam for a stocking stuffer. He had one at one time and it just stopped working, so he needed a replacement. I actually got this after rebate for only $9, which was greater than 50% off, so fantastic deal. Got a suction cup on it and there's a power button, which is great because you know, you can just put this right on your shower door. And if you wanna to listen to a podcast while you're in the shower, there you go. The next thing that I got, and I don't have it put together yet, but I'll pop a picture of it up on the screen right here, is this blanket ladder. This was originally $40 and I ended 
ended up getting it for 20 after rebate but I'm actually planning on having Adam put this together and putting it in our bedroom because we have a, a spot over in the corner where it's kind of blank and we have a bunch of throw blankets I thought it would be super pretty to display those there but that's also a great gift idea I think this site is awesome for finding those too because sometimes you just don't know <laughs> what to get people for Christmas right okay awesome too about rebate is you can get items for free after rebate so this game is called goat lords and it's for two to six players age seven plus I love finding new family games like this that we can all play together this was $19.99 retail and I'm getting $19.99 back which means that I got it for free so I haven't decided if I'm gonna put this under the tree for a Christmas gift yet or if I'm just gonna get it out maybe at Thanksgiving and we can all play it together but either way free is good I'll take it the next thing that I got half price was this really pretty travel coffee slash water mug it is insulated and you can see here that it's aluminum on the inside I love items like this especially this one because it's super slim and so like when I'm traveling especially when I'm flying I like things like this that I can stick in the side of my backpack and take with me that way I can refill it at the airport with either coffee or water and I got this for 50% off which is also a fantastic deal but this is another thing that would make a great gift for Christmas okay and then not exciting but very necessary here in the Midwest is this compact ice scraper that I got so I again got this off of Amazon it was originally $10 and I'm getting $6.50 back which means I got it for $3.50 I really like this one because it like I said it's compact the one that I have in my car right now is like really long and large and I hate that it takes up so much room <laughs> in the back seat or something like this I can just kind of slide under my seat so this will be going in my car for when it gets icy and snowy out and then the last thing which I thought was really fun and I'm planning on giving this to Connor for Christmas I haven't actually decided whether I'm giving it to him for Christmas or whether I'm gonna use some of these in his advent calendar but this kid loves fidget toys he is like the fidget toy extraordinaire and this particular item is actually a box of fidget toys and I ended up getting this for half off it was originally $20 for this big box and I got it for 10 after rebate but if you guys want to try a rebate I would highly highly recommend it I have had so much fun going on their site and finding things to order and getting money back and getting great deals for Christmas the other thing I wanted to mention is that rebate is not a review site so it's not required for you to go back and leave Amazon reviews or anything like that and it's really great for you to get discounted and free products from Target Walmart Etsy Amazon and eBay I'll have a link in the description box below so you can just go to that create your account start shopping they also have a referral program so if you sign up and you get any of your friends to sign up you can also get ten dollars per referral that signs up with your link so I think that's awesome too don't forget to check it out I'll have a link in the description box below thank you rebate again for sponsoring this week's weekend prep video okay so back to cooking this was actually a little bit later in the morning the kids really slept in because Saturday we had a swim meet and so they were super tired and that's also one of the reasons why I didn't get my weekend prep <laughs> started on Saturday too my flight ended up getting delayed back from New Orleans and so I ended up getting in at about midnight getting home at one o'clock on Saturday and then I had to turn around and get up at six and officiate a swim meet but anything for my kids right so they were sleeping in this morning but once they got up they were hungry for breakfast so I'm gonna go ahead and scramble up some eggs and make them some breakfast tacos I had a little bit of bacon left over from what I fried up for Adam and my kids love having this for breakfast it's super simple it's also something really quick and easy and you can even make it during the week too if you want a quick breakfast before school so I got those eggs beaten up with a little bit of half and half and salt and pepper and then I had some flour tortillas so I'm just gonna grab those and I will be heating those up in a dry skillet to just reheat them and toast them a little bit before I add all of the fillings I did not have any shredded cheddar cheese so I had to shred some myself I had just have my box grater here I'm going to give that cheddar cheese a shred you can put anything really that you want into breakfast tacos I just kept these simple because that's how my kids like them Kira just likes them with egg and bacon and then Connor likes them with egg bacon cheese and then I put just a little bit of mild taco sauce in his but once my cheese was grated I gave Murphy a bite <laughs> 
<laughs> he was very happy about that. I melted some butter in a skillet and then I'm just adding the eggs into there and then I'll just scramble these very slowly over medium heat until they are cooked through. Every time I use this blue fork, I always get a ton of questions about it. I'll try to link one down below. I actually got it at Sir La Table years ago. I think when Adam and I were in Denver, but it's super useful for scrambling eggs. So once those are done, I'm just going to get out my plates and I'm going to put my pre-warmed tortillas on there. I will add some scrambled eggs. Those are still warm, so they will melt the cheese. I'm also going to crumble some bacon over the top, add some hot sauce, and there are our super simple breakfast tacos. Really delicious and filling, and like I said, the kids really love them. So later on in the day, I decided that I was going to go ahead and make spaghetti with marinara sauce for dinner, and I also had a lasagna to put together for Lasagna Love. You guys know that that is a organization that I volunteer for, and so most weekends I do either make one or two lasagnas and then deliver those. This weekend I had two lasagnas to deliver. One of them was already prepped and in the fridge that I had thought out from the previous week, but then I still needed to make one more. So here I'm just making some marinara sauce. I thought out some ground beef and some Italian sausage. I thought that would be a good combination. So I'm just squeezing the sausage into my Dutch oven and I will saute that with the ground beef. I also added onion powder, some Italian seasoning, and some salt and pepper and just sauteed that until it was cooked through. I also have a plethora of fresh garlic that I thought would be good to use in this as well. So I did go ahead and add some fresh garlic to the meat mixture. That is optional, but I think it gives it a really good flavor. Sometimes add chopped onion, but honestly, when I'm making spaghetti for my kids and sometimes when I'm making lasagnas for lasagna love too, I just like to use onion powder because I know some people are not wild about like chunky onions in their lasagna or marinara sauce. Okay, so I'm just going to continue to use my mix and chop to chop up my ground meat and cook that until it is completely cooked through. I did not end up needing to drain this as there was not much grease in the bottom, but if there is, I would recommend draining it just because you don't want your marinara sauce to be greasy. And the thing I like about making marinara sauce like this for lasagna is then I have dinner for my family too. So I'm also going to get started making some focaccia and this is actually a recipe out of my cookbook which I can link down below and I will also type the recipe out down below. I am doubling this recipe for us to have for dinner and one to deliver with a lasagna for lasagna love. I'm just mixing some active dry yeast with some warm water in a glass measuring cup and then while that is sitting and the yeast is activating I'm going to add my marinara sauce to the cooked meat. I ended up adding one jar of Rayo's and then I also had one container of homemade marinara sauce in the fridge which I thawed out and added. I always shake my marinara sauce jars up with a little bit of water just to make sure that I get every bit <laughs> out of there and then give that a stir and then I just let this simmer covered probably for 20 to 40 minutes just depending on how much you want to meld the flavors and how much time you have but the longer you can simmer it the more tender the meat will be make sure that you put the lid on otherwise it will splatter all over the place okay so for the focaccia if you've never made a yeast bread before and you are maybe a little bit nervous I would definitely recommend this recipe it is super foolproof and it turns out delicious I'm adding some all-purpose flour to my food processor there and then I'm also going to add some salt. This recipe has super minimal ingredients and it is very delicious. While the food processor is running I'm going to pour in some olive oil and just kind of wait until that is all combined. It's going to look like small crumbs in there and then you can go ahead and pour in your yeast mixture. So this is the warm water mixed with the yeast and just pour that slowly in until the dough forms a ball. If you don't have a food processor you could also do this with a stand mixer with a dough hook attachment and if you don't have a stand mixer or a food processor you could do this the old-fashioned way with a wooden spoon you would just have to knead it by hand for a little bit longer so once the dough comes together that's what it looks like it's still a little bit wet but we are going to turn it out onto the counter and knead it a little bit the reason why I like this recipe is because the food processor does most of the work and you don't really end up needing to knead 
beat it for that long, which is always great. So I'm going to pull this out of the bowl there, put it on the counter that I have dusted with flour and just need this for probably a minute. You just want it to come together and for the dough to be super smooth. Once the dough is smooth, I'm going to get out a large bowl, pour a little bit of olive oil in the bottom of there and then rub that around. This is going to help keep the dough from sticking. And then once that bowl is rubbed with oil, plop the dough into the bottom of the bowl, make sure that it's oiled on all sides. And then I like to cover this with a tea towel. You can place it in a warm area, but my oven has a dough proofing function. So I always like to use that. It works out really, really well. Then while that's proofing, my spaghetti sauce or marinara sauce is still continuing to simmer. Okay. So at this point, I thought I would go work on my pantry a little bit. My pantry is in a constant state of organizing and reorganizing, but I bought these can racks on Amazon. I can link them down below. They are definitely going to work better than these plastic bins that I previously had. The plastic bins full of cans are just so heavy and it's such a pain to lift them off the shelves. The challenge I think in my pantry is that the shelves are so tall and so I really needed something that would help me use the space and be able to fit more cans of food in there without just having them in big bins and they're super heavy and hard to get down. These are the can racks that I ordered. Now I am putting some felt pads on the bottom of them just because my pantry shelves are wire racks and they need to be able to sit on there without poking through the wire racks. So that worked great. In the future, I may have Adam go with me to the hardware store and get like some thin, you know, prefab board or something like that to put under them. But for now, this is going to work fine. So I'm just going to place those on there. Adam was asking me like, didn't you just make a video not that long ago about reorganizing your pantry? And I'm like, well, I don't know. It was probably like six to eight months ago or something like that. And he's like, do people get tired of seeing that? And I'm like, well, no, I don't think so. <laughs> because, you know, everyone is always sort of in a state of either organizing things or reorganizing things. You know, sometimes you organize something one way and it deteriorates and you have to, you know, do it again. So I don't really think that anyone ever gets bored with organizing videos. At least I know I don't because I always am looking for new ideas. So basically, I just wanted to get the can racks fit up into that shelf and in place. That way I can kind of figure out what I wanted to put on each one. The reason why I ended up really, really liking these is because it really allows me to see what I have. And it also allows me to be able to use up items. I've already used like several items this week that I wouldn't have before if I hadn't have seen them and if they would have just been in those bins. And I also like being able to just kind of pull one can off the rack and the rest come down. I don't know. It's just super convenient. I really love them and would recommend them. So what I tried to do was sort of put all the beans together, all the veggies together, all the tomatoes together. And then there did end up being some miscellaneous items that I kind of had to combine. But if you're looking for a way to reorganize cans in your pantry and you have room for something like this, I would highly, highly recommend it. They work really great. The other good thing about them too is that they have these little dividers that you can move and make different widths. So if you have a can that is wider, you can just move that to accommodate it. Okay, so back to dinner. This is some bucatini that I'm just going to boil in some salted water and then the focaccia was done rising so I'm just going to go ahead and punch that down and put a tea towel over it and let it rest for another five minutes. So since one of these was going to a lasagna love family I'm going to place it in a aluminum pan and then I'm going to do the other in a pie plate for our family. You can also do this in an 8 by 8 dish. You can also double this recipe and do it in a 9 by 13 dish. The thing that's great about focaccia is that you can can customize it with whatever toppings that you want. There are a couple different variations in my cookbook. I think there's like one with sun-dried tomato and olives, but any herbs on top that you want, it's super flexible. So I cut the dough into two pieces and I'm just going to place those into my pans. Also, what you want to do is basically pat it down into the pan and then you can use your fingertips to make little holes in the top of the dough. And this is what's going to hold the olive oil on the top of the 
focaccia and also any of like the salt or herbs that you add to it and then i had some fresh herbs in the refrigerator that i wanted to get used up you can totally use dried herbs i've done it lots of times no big deal but i did have some rosemary and thyme so i thought that would be really obviously delicious with the <laughs> italian themed dishes you know with the lasagna and the spaghetti so i'm just going to give those a rough chop and sprinkle them over the top do be careful with fresh rosemary because it is very very strong it's a lovely flavor but if you add way too much to your dishes it is going to taste more like a christmas tree and less like a italian seasoned <laughs> focaccia bread so just be careful with that but i do have a recipe also where you sprinkle it with cheddar cheese on top and then sprinkle it with everything but the bagel seasoning that's really good too but this bread bakes up super quick and delicious and it tastes like obviously fresh baked homemade bread and it's super easy so you know how can you beat that okay so once my noodles were done i just let them sit in the hot water my family was in different stages of eating on this evening so there is my marinara sauce all cooked up i did reserve half for the other lasagna i was making and now i'm going to give that delicious focaccia bread a slice it is still warm look how good that looks you guys i highly encourage you to try this recipe your family is going to love it okay guys so i actually wanted to show you my final uh pantry reorganization so i still haven't got the ladder up from the basement and uh, completed the top shelf yet as you can see there's some things that need to be organized up there since I've reorganized my pantry last we actually have redone our basement and have some more storage space down there so the things that I don't use very often like my roaster punch bowl you know that kind of stuff might go down there um, but I'll show you kind of what I ended up with for now I really love these can racks like I said I got them on Amazon they're fantastic I'll link them down below they're not super cheap, but in the end, it's kind of an investment that will help me um, organize my pantry for the long term, so I'm okay with investing in that. But you can see here that I've got three on this row right here, and then one down here, which has more like condiment things on it. And I tried to separate it out as best I could, but I just have kind of a variety of different cans, and so some of them have mixed items, um, some of them are like soup is over here, you know, tuna, crab meat, coconut milk, that kind of thing. There's some like veggies here, cranberry sauce, tomatoes, olives, and then over here I tried to put the beans and the veggies. Um, I redid all of my pasta into one of these plastic bins. I get these at Walmart. Um, I haven't actually seen them there in a while, but I used to get them there and this is what I used to have my cans in, but I just found that it was too heavy with a bunch of cans stacked up in there to be able to like pull out and lift from the top shelf. So I like putting lighter items in there better so that I can you know, easily pull them out. And the thing I also like about having the can racks up here is that you can kind of, you know, since I'm like, my head's down here and the, the cans are up here, I can kind of look and see like, oh, there's some baked beans, there's some corn, there's some whatever. Um, so that kind of works as well. And then in this section right here, I kind of put all of my lentils, rice, um, you know, boxed pasta, pasta mixes, things like that. Um, back here in the corner, that's the one thing about this pantry that I'm not wild about is like in the corners. It's just there you have to put things back there that you don't use a lot because it's hard to get them out so back there I have like raisins you know some different kind of nut flowers that I don't use all that often um, these containers I got a while back at Walmart they're like the BHG um, square canisters and I really like them I have them labeled with my label maker I want to actually come in here like with my Cricut at some point and label these bins um, this one just kind of has like miscellaneous stuff in it like ramen and croutons and things like that. I ended up putting my extra K-cups in one of these uh, Rubbermaid like cereal containers. I know it sounds weird but they fit in there. <laughs> and then in this bin I ended up putting like extra like sugars, nut flours, um, bread mixes, things that I don't use all of that often. I still have my rotating snack organizers down here. I can link these. Um, as well. I've had these for a while and I really really like them. I have like a larger one I think I got this one on Amazon and this one I got at Walmart um, But they're really convenient because I can keep things like you know 
granola bars and cheese crisps and fruit snacks and peanuts and you know pretzels things like that for the kids to kind of grab and go uh, down here I have some more cereal um, this is sort of like a miscellaneous section of like granola and then in these containers I kind of have like packets of seasoning um, I still have a lot of stuff to to go through yet so I probably need to do some more pantry meals um, over in this section I kind of have like crackers and chips there's some miscellaneous like <laughs> lentils and sauce down here that won't fit I did end up getting some pretzels at the store um, last week and putting them into one of these Rubbermaid containers. I got these at Costco. It came in like a four pack for $13, which I thought was fantastic. So um, those have been coming in super handy. Um, down here I have my Instant Pots. I do use those fairly frequently, so it's nice to have them down low where I can just grab them and use them. I've got cleaning supplies. I did also take everything out of the bottom of the pantry and mop the floor sweep it, mop it, all of that. It was a mess <laughs> in here before. Um, I've got a vintage picnic basket down there that my grandma gave me, so that will be staying. Um, I've got extra condiments down here. I kind of just decided to leave this down low because all of the con extra condiments in there were super heavy. Um, in here I've got my built bars and some just extra pantry ingredients, my bread machine, extra oil, lunch boxes, foil pans. That's our sous vide container. Um, I've got some of our extra dog food in here, containers. I decided to put the, the nut butters down here because we do use peanut butter quite frequently. Uh, my potatoes and onions. And then over here, we have this um, dog food container that Adam ordered on Amazon several years ago. It works really, really well. And then I just hang up all my aprons in here, my um, broom, you know, fly swatters, dusters, and then my Dyson um, cordless vacuum goes in here also. So overall, this has been working really, really well. It feels super organized to me. Like I said, the only thing I need to do yet is the top uh, shelf, but I can probably get that done this coming weekend. I also wanted to show you guys quickly. I did work on my refrigerator this weekend too. Um, I got these new kind of rollout trays from Amazon. I'll link them down below, but essentially you lift up on here and then you can pull out like there's wheels in the back, which I find fantastic because the problem with like trays like this that don't have any wheels on them is it's just, I don't know, especially when you have a big one like this, it's hard to get out with these. You just kind of lift them up, roll them out. You can see like I've got all my pickles and mustard and stuff in there. And then this one just has, has kind of like miscellaneous condiments, but I really, really like those. I only ordered two of them because I figured like right now that's all that will fit in my fridge. Um, I do have some extra bins down here. I kind of feel like maybe I need to reorganize this stuff a little bit. I normally keep like fruit and yogurt and pudding and stuff in this one and then in the one below it I keep uh, my lemons and limes. I still need to do some organization because I just got groceries and like this lettuce hasn't been <laughs> processed yet and stuff like that. Um, I'll probably clean out my fridge this coming weekend so you guys might see that in a video. But yeah I just wanted to share these bins because I thought that they were super cool and they have these adjustable dividers in here too that you can um, sort of make you know the different sizes of um, compartments that you want so I don't know I've just I'm trying to be you know ex be experimental with different kinds of organization in my fridge because it seems like we just have so many freaking condiments and like I, I do pare them down at times um, but as you know it gets kind of overwhelming so the, the one thing that I have really liked in this fridge is this soda bin right here um, it's really convenient to just only keep like well right now we're kind of running low but normally I just keep like you know 10 cans in here um, rather than you know kind of cluttering up the fridge with a bunch of soda and then you know these bins actually work really well I've, I got these on Amazon too a long time ago but these work really well for like these kind of snacks because it's just easy for the kids to pull them out so anyway I just thought I would share that with you guys as well in this video since that is something I worked on this weekend
All right, well, that is gonna be it for this week's weekend prep video. I hope that you guys enjoyed coming along with me in the kitchen and doing some organizing. Thank you so much for all of your kind words and support. Don't forget to check out Rebade. I'll have their information and a link in the description box below. So go sign up and get some free money and some free stuff. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Sound.